This is the landmark case of T. Ham v. Sibong Hanoi, GR No. L21450, April 15, 1968. In June of 1948, the Judiciary Act of 1948 was passed. Exactly a month after its passage, or in July 1948, the spouses T. Ham commenced a civil case in the CFI Cebu against the spouses Sibong Hanoi to recover a debt worth 1,908 pesos. Thereafter, on the basis of the prayer and the complaint, a writ of attachment was issued by the court against properties of the defendants. However, the same was soon dissolved upon the filing of a counterbond by defendants and the Manila Surety and Fidelity Company, Inc. The CFI ruled in favor of the spouses T. Ham and issued a writ of execution against the defendants and Manila Surety, respectively. Manila Shorty objected to the lack of demand and sought affirmative relief by requesting that its liability be lifted. The writ was initially denied, but after proper demand, it was eventually granted. Manila Shorty moved to quash due to lack of required summary hearing, but such was denied. In 1962, or 14 years later, Manila Shorty appealed in the Court of Appeals. The Court of Appeals affirmed the CFI decision. The following year, Manila Shorty then filed a motion to dismiss on the ground that the CFI Cebu did not acquire jurisdiction over the case as RA-296 placed actions where the demand does not exceed 2,000 pesos, without interest, in the inferior courts, not the CFI. The issue in this case is, whether the Court of First Instance of Cebu acquired jurisdiction over the case in light of RA-296. The Supreme Court ruled in the affirmative. Although RA-296 had already removed actions for recovery where the demand is lower than 2,000 pesos from the jurisdiction of the CFI, the issue was never raised until an adverse decision 15 years later, thus allowing for jurisdiction through estoppel or latches. According to the Supreme Court, the facts and circumstances necessitates the application of estoppel and latches because 1. The jurisdictional issue was only raised after an adverse decision was reached in the CA. 2. They filed affirmative relief in the RTC and CA, especially when it sought to be relieved of liability. The court accorded jurisdiction by estoppel, emphasizing the principle of latches. Latches is failure or neglect, for an unreasonable and unexplained length of time, to do that which, by exercising due diligence, could or should have been done earlier, it is negligence or omission to assert a right within a reasonable time, warranting a presumption that the party entitled to assert it either has abandoned it or declined to assert it. Let us now proceed to the summary of principles. The first one is very important as it has been asked in the bar exams before. Law students are highly encouraged to take note of it. According to the Supreme Court, latches is an exception to the rule that jurisdiction over the subject matter may be raised at any stage of the proceedings. The rule is that jurisdiction over the subject matter is conferred upon the courts exclusively by law and as the lack of it affects the very authority of the court to take cognizance of the case, the objection may be raised at any stage of the proceedings. However, considering the facts and circumstances of the present case, a party may be barred by latches from invoking this plea for the first time on appeal for the purpose of annulling everything done in the case with the active participation of said party invoking the plea. Second, is the principle of estoppel. As a rule, a party may be estopped or barred from raising a question in different ways and for different reasons. Thus, we speak of a. Estoppel in paes, b. Estoppel by deed or by record, and c. Estoppel by latches. Next question, what is the nature of latches? Latches, in a general sense, is failure or neglect, for an unreasonable and unexplained length of time, to do that which, by exercising due diligence, could or should have been done earlier, 
it is negligence or omission to assert a right within a reasonable time, warranting a presumption that the party entitled to assert it either has abandoned it or declined to assert it. But, what is the basis of latches? The doctrine of latches or of stale demands is based upon grounds of public policy which requires, for the peace of society, the discouragement of stale claims and, unlike the statute of limitations, is not a mere question of time but is principally a question of the inequity or unfairness of permitting a right or claim to be enforced or asserted. In this case, the Supreme Court also ruled that a party cannot invoke the court's jurisdiction and then deny it to escape a penalty. It is not right for a party who has affirmed and invoked the jurisdiction of a court in a particular matter to secure an affirmative relief, to afterwards deny that same jurisdiction to escape penalty. The Supreme Court said, quote, Upon the same principle is what we said in the three cases mentioned in the resolution of the Court of Appeals of May 20, 1963, to the effect that we frown upon the undesirable practice of a party submitting his case for decision and then accepting the judgment, only if favorable, and attacking it for lack of jurisdiction, when adverse. End quote. The Supreme Court also had the opportunity to rule that separate judgment is not necessary to hold Shorty liable on the bond. There is no need for a separate action or judgment against the Shorty in order to hold it liable on the bond. A bond filed for discharge of attachment is, per Section 12 of Rule 59, to secure the payment to the plaintiff of any judgment he may recover in the action, and stands in place of the property so released. Hence, after the judgment for the plaintiff has become executory and the execution is returned unsatisfied, as under Section 17, Rule 59, and as in this case, the liability of the bond automatically attaches and, in failure of the surety to satisfy the judgment against the defendant despite demand therefore, writ of execution may issue against the surety to enforce the obligation of the bond. Those were the essential points of law embodied in the case. For more audio case digests like this, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Have a nice day!